Hello, Jack. What are you up to? I've been enjoying all that Gratz has to offer. Well, we really should be getting over to the factory, you know. Can Dieter come? Yes, Dieter can come. The word Graz comes from the Slavic word, meaning small castle. It says here that Graz has six universities and one of the best preserved city centres in Central Europe. It's all very interesting, Jack, but we must really get over to the Ipace lunch. Ian, Graz has over a thousand different architectural styles to see. 34 museums, two galleries, festivals, exhibitions, a lively cabaret and comedy scene, and over seven hectares of contemporary sculpture. And you're taking me to see a factory? Yep, sure am. This better be worth it. It'll be worth it, trust me. Hello and welcome. I am Jack Whitehall and you join me live here in Graz, Austria, for the launch of Jaguar's first ever electric vehicle, the new Jaguar I-Pace. But why am I in Graz? It's a question I have been asking myself again and again. Graz, widely regarded as one of Europe's greatest cities. It has, why are you laughing, that's serious. It has so much to offer, like the Grazberg, a government building which boasts two spiral staircases, which is the most spiral staircases in any building in all of Graz. And you would be insane on your trip not to go and visit the Schlossberg Wall, voted one of the most beautiful walls in all of Europe. If you like walls, you came to the right place. But this is not a show about Graz, no, we're here because this is the epicenter in the field of hydroelectric power in the EU. You didn't think Graz could get better, it just did. I also bet you didn't know that Austria ranks amongst the most specialized countries in Europe in the field of mechanical engineering. And although the cars are designed and engineered in the UK, Jaguar produced cars all over the world, with this being the actual state-of-the-art production facility where the E-Pace and now the I-Pace are produced. I mean, literally being produced right now. I don't know whether that, is that gonna go on for the whole show? Because I'm finding it quite distracting. <laughs> Could we stop it, maybe? Maybe kill it? Oh my God, that's actually worked. I didn't know. Okay, we're not making any more EOI paces at the moment. Okay, it's here that up to 150 robots, like that one behind me, build the I-Pace. Not only though are we gonna be celebrating the new Jaguar I-Pace launch, but we will be discovering how Jaguar are game changing. However, if there are games to be played, there is only one man I want on my team. Would you please welcome award-winning motoring journalist and broadcaster, Johnny Smith. Hello, Jack. Hello, everybody. It's a real pleasure to be here, to be part of this special moment in Jaguar history. 2018 is the 50th anniversary of the XJ model, and it's also the 70th birthday of the XK120. But today, it's all about the all-electric I-Pace. And Jack, you and I, we're on a bit of a, a voyage of discovery. Only our voyage, my voyage, actually, will involve moving off this stage and over there into the factory to see firsthand what Jaguar do, how they work their magic. You sit here in your comfy eye paced chair and I'll just crack on, all right? Off you go. Yeah. I'm Promise me one thing as well, Johnny, when you're talking to the factory workers, try not to act manly, okay? You let yourself down last time. <laughs> Johnny, we'll okay. see you in a bit. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. See you later, Johnny. Coming up on the show, we're going to be visiting Mexico ahead of this weekend's Formula E race. And I will be chatting to two people called Ian. One is the vehicle line director for Jaguar. The other is a man who over the past 24 hours I have bonded with in a serious and at times passionate way. Jaguar want me to call him the director of design, but the only title I know him by now is the title of friend. It's my new bae, my brother from another mother, the absolute dream boat that is Ian Callum, director of design. Oh, I love that man. Absolute legend, absolute legend. 
I also, at this point, want to offer a special welcome to those tuning in live around the world, including those in Dusseldorf, Guten Tag, and Oslo. Hello. Uh, you can get involved along with everyone else watching right now around the world. Send in your comments and questions. Please keep them on topic, though. The last time I announced that to the public, you have no idea the kind of suggestions I received. Use hashtag Jaguar, electrifies, or hashtag iPace. And you lucky people will be the first audience to see a brand new documentary later on tonight. Here is a little taster to whet your appetite. Where's, there's no seatbelt. Okay, I'm gonna have to risk it without. Looks incredible, right? Now, I would like to welcome our wonderful studio audience. Yes, here they are. And if, if they weren't excited enough already, someone in this room could be walking away tonight with a brand new iPace. No, don't you, you'll have to pay for it. That, that, I made it sound like there was a competition, we're giving one away, not you, you will have to pay for it. Um, but you do find yourselves in a very privileged position. You're going to be given an exclusive insight into the new Jaguar I-Pace. Firstly, to show you how fast an I-Pace charges, we are going to turn on that car right now and the charge will be shown right there on the screen. 40 minutes, no problem. I've heard you can get up to 100 kilometers by plugging in for just 15 minutes. That's like chatting on your mobile phone for a whole week on one 15 minute charge. Now, still to come, we'll be heading over to Mexico for an incredible challenge. But before we do, today's event is already causing quite the stir on social media. And here to keep a close eye on the buzz is a lady who's shot to fame with her unboxing films. She knows her tech and she knows how to take them out of boxes. Not only that, but her name is very on brand. It's the lovely I Justine. Thanks, Jack, and a huge welcome to our studio audience. Over 45,000 people pressed the I want one button on Jaguar.com. And we have so many people here who are some lucky viewers or they get to join us here for all of this fun and the amazing reveal that we're going to have today. Plus, we have fans tuning in live all over the world. And more importantly, they're getting involved by using the hashtag Jaguar Electrifies and hashtag iPace. So, Keep those messages coming in. We have a few here. Here from Twitter, we have Nats Coomer, who says, I am so excited that Jaguar is now making electric cars. What a future forward brand. And we couldn't agree with you more. James says, this is the most beautiful Jaguar I have ever seen. So you guys keep those questions and your comments coming in, and we'll be reading those all throughout the night. Now, over in the factory is Johnny Smith. And my question is, Johnny, where are you? I'm here, Justine. I'm here in the middle of the plant where the very latest robot technology is right behind me as these eight creatures construct the aluminium frame of the iPace and the whole procedure is completely autonomous. There's a bunch of robots here all moving in absolute unison. It reminds me of that time that I went to the NSYNC concert. Yeah. Anyway, what they're doing is they're using a combination of rivets and aerospace glue to construct the body shell. Anyway, just yesterday, the iPace was put through its paces, its iPaces, where it took on a challenge in Mexico with a little help from the Panasonic Jaguar Formula E team. And our presenter, Natalie Pinkham, is over there to join in with the four-wheeled electric fun. Hello, Natalie. Thanks, Johnny. Yes, I'm here in Mexico for a very special reveal of the brand new Jaguar iPace. Two cars, two drivers, and the challenge, naught to 60 miles per hour and back to a standstill as fast as possible. Join us a little later to find out who wins. Mm. I don't want to spoil things, but I'm pretty sure the better looking proper car wins, the British one. Still to come, we have got the results of that race and the car unveiling and 
even more excitingly, you in the studio and at home will get to see the live, sparkling chemistry between me and my new best friend, Ian Callum, Director of Design. Please remember to keep your questions and comments coming in. Hashtag Jaguar Electrifies and hashtag iPace as we get ever closer to the reveal of the iPace here in lovely Graz. Anyway, everyone is always talking about smart technology. If, like me, you still think a CD auto changer is impressive, then the iPace will blow your tiny minds. The new iPace is so easy to get your head round, one could even call it child's play. And here is a short film that proves it. Hi, I'm here to pick up my new iPace. OK, sir, if you'd like to jump in. <laughs> Very funny. Are your parents here? OK, get in the car. The whole car is a 4G Wi-Fi hotspot. Where's the button to delete internet history? You know, just in case I'm buying a gift for someone and I don't want them to see what it is. Inside the cabin are six USB ports. Guys, already way ahead of you. iPace recognises your key fob as you approach and automatically adjusts to your preferences like temperature, seat position and your favourite radio station. Coming up next on Celine Dion FM. Obviously that's broken. The onboard system is built in AI. Now that's what I'm talking about, spy stuff. Where is the ejector seat button? There is no ejector seat. Hubcap lasers? It's a learning computer that calculates your exact range based on weather, traffic and your driving style. Learning computer. You two are cramping my style. I'm out of here. Zip it! What? How did you get there? How do you do that? Zero to 60 miles per hour in 4.5 seconds. 696 newton metres of torque. Torque. I'm all about the torque. You don't even know what torque is, do you? Talk is my middle name. Actually, it says here it's Benedict. <laughs> it's a family name. So that's it. Any questions? One question. Which one of you is going to teach me to drive? You don't know how to drive. No, I don't. So it seems there are three golden rules in this industry. Never work with children, animals, or Jack Whitehalls. Anyway, I'm in production heaven in the middle of the factory where a combination of humans and robots just here fit the axle to the chassis. Now, even if you have no idea what an axle is and you didn't know that it fits into a chassis, it kind of doesn't matter. Just look at that precision. This is a beautiful sight, and this happens here in Graz every single day. And this process of the, the engine or the electric motors being joined to the body shell is called the marriage. And in the case of the iPace, it's got two electric motors, one on the back axle and one on the front axle because it's four-wheel drive. Now I'm going to continue watching this for a couple of minutes because I'm totally transfixed by it. And then I'm going to come and join you, Jack, for the big reveal. No, either I've accidentally turned on the heated seat or I've soiled myself. Oh, sorry. So. An iPace takes about eight hours to build once it's in the trim part of the factory, but it only takes a fraction of that time to charge. Let's see where we are with our charging studio car. 38%, not bad at all. And now the moment I've been waiting for, over in Mexico where the iPace is about to take part in a fantastic head-to-head -head challenge. A quarter of a mile, a deserted section of a Formula E track, two fully charged batteries. Who will win? I am on the edge of my extremely comfortable and well-designed iPace seat.
Welcome to Mexico. On Saturday, this track will host the latest round of the ABB Formula E Championship, but we're here to celebrate the launch of the brand new Jaguar I-Pace with a very special challenge, showing that innovating from race to road has placed Jaguar at the forefront of the EV revolution. And here it is, the I-Pace, all electric, all wheel drive, and 0 to 60 in just 4.5 seconds. So, what of its challenger? We've brought along a car from an established player in the EV market. But does it have what it takes to beat the Jaguar I-Pace in our head-to-head -head challenge? Driving the I-Pace is Panasonic Jaguar Racing's Kiwi Formula E star, Mitch Evans. In the Tesla is Brazilian Indy 500 winner and former IndyCar champ, Tony Canan. The challenge is very simple. From a standing start, the drivers have to reach 60 miles per hour as fast as possible, and then break to a standstill. The one covering the shortest distance wins. Capiche? I got it. Who's going to win? The eye pace is lighter. It's air drill. I've got this. Come on, then. Enough of the talking. Get in the cars. So the pressure is on. Can the eye pace become the EV to beat? This thing is a beast. You've got zero chance. Bring it on. Good stuff. This is quite a walk. Mate, I smashed it. I need a faster car. Can you get me the P100D? <laughs> well, for the price of a P100D, I could almost buy two of these. Sure, sure, mate. <laughs> I still get another car to try. OK. That is the bigger brother to the first Model X. It's the 100D. It's more powerful than the 75D. But will it be quick enough to beat the I-Pace? Let's find out. So two out of two, Jaguar have won it by a similar distance again. You're pretty smug, and rightly so. How did it feel? Yeah, it was great. The response was instant and also pulled up really well. Surprised? Yes, I thought I had him, but two out of two, I, I give up. Proof then that Jaguar are really set to shake up the EV revolution. I think we need to pop into Mexico City and sample a few sights and delights. I agree. Dinner and he's buying it. Done. Come on Let's then. Go. How was that for a challenge? The I-Pace won, of course, but what do you expect from a car that can go from 0 to 60 in 4.5 seconds with a 90 kilowatt hour battery? Don't know, I've, why, why have I started talking about Jeremy Clarkson? I don't know why that. <laughs> it's a five-seater electric vehicle with a sports car performance, making it one of the greatest cars in the world. <laughs> the new Jaguar I-Pace, sophisticated and great looking, a bit like its designer, Ian Cullum, director of design. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the reason we are all here today in Graz, please show your appreciation for the stunning new Jaguar I-Pace.
Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the brand new Jaguar I-Pace and its designer, Ian Callum, Director of Design. <laughs> wow, wow. Can I just okay. say, so damn stylish. And the car is great as well. I mean, you must be so proud. It looks, very it looks proud. amazing. We're all very proud of it, yeah. So I would it's drive that car. Jack, you can't drive. I would get driven in that car. <laughs> it is beautiful, congratulations. Thank and you. I know how eager many of you today are to get behind the wheel of this car. Well, now you can. As of this moment, it is available to own. Now, still to come, I'll be chatting to my new best friend, the ying to my yang, the Siegfried to my Roy, Ian Callum, Director of Design. And I'll also be meeting a second Ian, Ian Hoban. Uh, don't worry, you're my favorite. Uh, <laughs> keep your questions coming in at hashtag Jaguar Electrifies and hashtag iPace. Now a chance to discover how the Jaguar team produced not just another electric car, but a true Jaguar car. That sounded, you like the sound of that. that I should do the voiceovers for Jaguar, definitely. You you're gonna, this is my favorite line in the whole script. Get ready for this. Brace yourself. You're going to love it. The car that electricity has been waiting for. <laughs> yeah, that is good. That is good. Come on. Come on. The Jag bigwigs love that. Let's find out a little more. I'm really passionate about sustainability. Um, my business is based around building low energy houses and encouraging people to live low energy lifestyles. So, is this a family car as well? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, rear leg room, rear head room are very good. Yep. You can get your packaging dimensions correct to have a 550 litre boot in the back as well. Right. And so, is the battery mounted on dampers or something? The battery is actually a, a structural part of the car. Right, okay. Uh, so, the battery is solidly mounted to, to the frame. Structural rigidity point of view, that's just a massive advantage. That, again, it's harnessing the benefits of having a battery, of, of it being an EV to make it a better car. Yeah, love it. It was such fun and it's really incredible. It felt so sure footed and it felt like a proper off roader that you could actually take it pretty much anywhere. And the space inside as well, really impressive. Felt very comfortable. I'm six foot four, <laughs> got headroom. Um, so that's all really good with a, an EV with a good range, can go off road, can go very fast. Can do everything, I guess. I'm joined by Ian Callum to take a closer look around the new Jaguar I Pace. Hey, Ian. Hello. Hi. How are you? Yeah, it's good. 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 To see you. So, this is your newest baby. It is. Right? And the team. Yeah. yeah. And it's fair to say that it is unconventional for a Jag. It is very unconventional anyway. I mean, it's yeah. quite different, isn't it? Yeah. Well, for starters, so. in Jaguar terms, Long bonnet, where's that gone? Yeah, long bonnets. We had long bonnets because we had big engines. Okay. Big V8s or six cylinders. There is no engine in the front of this except a small electric motor sitting between the wheels. So we can have a short bonnet. And the great thing about that, of course, is it gives all the rest of the room over to the occupants. Right. It's got right. to be an advantage. It's quite aero efficient. Was it designed by the wind tunnel? Or was it designed by you? A lot of physics in this car, I have to tell you. There's the airflow comes through this vent here at the front, off the front, flows over the roof, perfectly formed roof to hold onto the air, and then through to the back. Okay. And it holds onto the, the, the car all the way through. All about physics. This is quite an abrupt backside, can I say? It, it is, yeah, for, especially, for for, especially for a Jaguar. But you know, believe it or not, square back ends in the car are more efficient for aerodynamics than rounded back ends. Yep. Worth bearing in mind. Yep. So we've cut off the back and we've followed physics to the T on this car for the right reasons. Yep. Right, let's go into the place where you live when you drive a car, because this is the thing. I've got, for you viewers at home, a special, I've got an Ian Callum cam. Look. Callum cam. It's a bit creepy, but don't worry. Yeah. It's so that I can show people what we're going to talk about. Take me through this, because obviously this is the place where you live in a car, so the cockpit's all important. It is, you know, it's got more space than it said before of a car of its size, but uh, the great thing we've been working on is the amount of usable space and the practicality. For instance, the centre console has got a, an opening here under the armrest. Let, let's have a look. And it's 10 litres of space. 10? 10, almost large enough to take a handbag. Crikey. That could be useful. Couldn't it, Johnny? That is big, yeah, that is big. That's yeah. fantastic. That's yeah. So you've got the occupant space, Presumably, to design an electric car, is it a bit liberating compared to what you're used to? Yes, it's hugely liberating. You know, from the wheel, the wheel uh, centres upwards, it, uh, it's a free, free range of form. 
So we can do what we want above it, and it means, means we can do the shape, draw the shape that we want above the wheels. Yeah, it's, it's radical. It is radical. Is it fair to say that this is as radical as the XJ was 50 years ago? 1968, yes. Unfortunately, I remember 1968 quite well. Um, Yes, I think this car, the XJ was a very radical car in 1968. This car is just as radical now as that was then. Maybe even more so. Really? Yeah, I think so. You watch this space. I think it will be. Well, thank you very much. Thank, thank you very you. much, Ian. Um, well, look, obviously, there's a bit of a buzz going on on social media about this car right now. It's growing and growing, and I, Justine, is there maintaining law and order for us. What's going on, Justine? There is a lot going on online, and everyone here is also excited, but everyone online is also very, very excited. And I have some tweets here. This one specifically from Sergio. I've never been a car guy until they went electric. Now the new Jaguar looks like something out of a movie. So hopefully soon we will see this in some future movies. Uh, we have one here from Gadget Jack, who says, what's your favorite feature of the new iPace? One of the things that I most love is I've always wanted to have an electric vehicle, and I think this will be my first one. I love how spacious it is, and it looks amazing too. And Doug, we've got here, it says, it's great to see such a well-respected car manufacturer getting serious about EV. I agree, Doug. Now, the iPace looks awesome, and I love the tech, and especially the in-control apps, and I can't wait to get my Spotify playlist on. My driving track of choice is Shape of You by Ed Sheeran. Hey, Jack, what about you? My driving track? Um, well, when me and Ian go on our long drives in the countryside, we tend to listen to Michael Bublé together. Don't we? No, no, we don't. Okay, we don't. We don't. Um, no, as you can see, Ian is back now with me in one of his beautifully designed chairs. Um, we have had lots of questions coming in. Um, uh, we're going to try and answer as many as possible. Fan questions for Ian Callum. I don't know whether that's fans of cars or specifically Ian Callum fans. That's how much it's of a big dog he is in the automotive world. He has his own fandom. They're like believers, but mainly men in their 60s. Okay. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> You're failing me now. First question. What is your favorite thing about the I-Pace? I love the overall shape of the car. It's quite distinctive, it's quite different, it's quite radical. And of course, the fact that it's electric. Guilt-free. Guilt-free. How much has um, it changed from the original concept car to what we see here? Actually, very little, a few millimeters here and there, but overall, this does represent the concept car. We've built a concept car that you can buy. How difficult is it building a car's shape around a battery rather than an engine? It's actually much simpler, to be honest with you, because you have much more freedom. You don't have to worry about these great big lumps of metal we used to deal with, so it's actually a little easier. Yeah. More fun. More fun. Much more fun. Jags have power and presence, like their designer, Ian Callum. It doesn't say that, I've added that. Um, <laughs> these are fan questions. How different is it driving a battery version without the engine roar? Well, you know, Jaguars have been known for the roar of their V8s and straight sixes, but also there's a serenity in Jaguars' history as well. The lovely limousines that were very smooth to drive. This car is full of serenity and quietness, and it's, it's, it's a wonderful place to be. It also has a wonderful interior. Will we see a host of new Jaguar cars with this new modern interior? Yes, this is actually a template for the next generation of Jaguars. You'll see lots more of this in all of our cars. Uh, final question, this comes from your biggest fan. Uh, he's called Jack and he's from London. And he asks, will we be keeping in touch after this event? Yes, Jack. Yes. Thank you, Ian. Now, uh, yes, round of applause, please. Uh, now, one of the biggest concerns for drivers when purchasing an electric car is whether or not it will get you to where you want to go. Well, maybe this will put your mind at rest. My name's Simon Patel. We're out here in LA with Jaguar's I-Pace, our first electric car. This is a, a TT car, touring triad car. It's one of the first vehicles off the actual production facility. We have over 200 prototypes. We're going to take a road all the way to Morro Bay, so we'll have a good opportunity to see about this uh, battery range. So we're going to do this entire trip without stopping to charge the car. The car will be capable of delivering more than this kind of range in real world. So. Let's go. How long does a battery in a car like this last? We design our battery life to be at least 10 years. It's nice to not have to trade off considering the environment and wanting an electric car, but also being able to benefit from the luxury of a Jaguar car.
So Anne, what did you think of the road trip? I truly enjoyed this road trip. I think this is a great car. It is absolutely comfortable. It's a great ride and can't wait for it to be on the market. I'm here to witness the moment where the all important 90 kilowatt hour battery pack down there is brought up and met the chassis of the iPACE there. But how does the iPACE battery actually work? Well, earlier today, Jack and I attempted to demonstrate just that with the help of a large hose pipe and a whole load of buckets. Okay, I'm gonna try and explain how an iPACE battery pack works and how you go about charging it. I cannot wait. Okay, let's start with the basics. To charge a battery, you need to supply a voltage greater than the battery itself via some kind of charger. Got it. The greater the difference between the battery voltage and the charger voltage, the quicker it charges. What will charge? The battery. The other thing to explain is that in the case of the iPACE, it has 432 individual battery cells. Oh, like the Graz Carlow prison. Interestingly, the third largest prison in the whole of Austria. The 432 high energy density lithium ion pouch cells, they do kind of look like cup of soups, are arranged in groups, and these are called modules, okay? Imagine a bucket of water. What colour is the bucket? It doesn't matter. It's important to me. Okay, grey. Good, because that's what I was imagining. To charge a battery, we need to fill these buckets of water without spilling anything. Spillage is bad. Johnny has spillage issues. He hates spillage. I've split the buckets to represent three modules, okay? 12 cells per module, that's 36 bucket. I'll trust you. If we fill them from a hose, from too great a height, gravity and also pressure, you'll cause a lot of spillage. If your hose is too high, there will be a lot of spillage. Yeah. Johnny said so. Exactly, like this. Yeah. It's not very efficient, lots of spillage. But, slow the water pressure down and maybe reduce the height, you can brim the buckets more efficiently. So if you get your hose closer and you reduce your flow, less spillage. Exactly. Spillage is inherently inefficient. The clever thing about this battery is that the cells are not charged individually, they're all charged in unison. In these buckets it looks negligible, but imagine trying to fill a swimming pool with a hose. It wouldn't really happen. Bah, haven't met my pool boy. He comes very highly rated. Okay, there's one thing I failed to mention as well. About my pool boy? No. Good, because a uh, decent one is hard to come by these days. At the end, there's something important that happens, and this is called cell balancing. And this means they're all constantly being topped up evenly, and this ensures the longevity of the battery pack and also the maximization of charge. And balancing the cells ensures that the battery doesn't go over 450 volts. Yeah, that's exactly it. Can I ride one of the fire engines now, please? I'll put your hose away, Johnny. Thank you, Jack and Johnny. I think we all learned a lot here. And I'm hanging out now with Jim Chapman. So this is pretty exciting. So how are you doing? I'm all right, thank you. It's been a long time since I've seen you, right? Yes, it's good to see you again. You too. I, I love the way you say Jaguar. OK, I don't even want to talk about it. I'm sorry. That's how we say it. You've literally never sounded more American than being right here in Austria. <laughs> Blows my mind. Well, it's super exciting to be here. Now, if you, do you see yourself living with an, IV or an EV? I mean, is this going to be the iPACE? Will this be your electric car that you go to? Yeah, totally. I think that a big thing for me is my carbon footprint at the moment. I travel a lot for work and I'm trying to make cutbacks whenever I can. So I want to have solar panels on my roof. Um, I want to start driving electric. Um, and I, I think this is its really sexy to look at. It still looks like a Jaguar, but has all the benefits of being electric. And you're going to be doing a live stream on Instagram later too, correct? I am. Pretty much as soon as this is over, um, head over to Jaguar on Instagram because I'm going to be taking over and kind of giving sort of a behind the scenesy type thing. I might chat to you, I'll chat to Jack, chatting to Ian. I'm going to try and out Jack him if I can. That'd be nice. <laughs> so Jaguar or Jaguar? What, what, what do you think? <laughs> I think Jaguar is how it's pronounced. Okay. <laughs> I will try my best throughout the rest of the show. But right now we're going to go find out where Johnny is because he's been everywhere this show. Johnny, where are you at? Hey Justine, have a look at this. Here we are on the rolling road. This is the bit where the iPACE is being driven up and having a full systems check for the very first time. Remarkable to think that eight hours ago, this vehicle was just a collection of parts. And of course, because this car is electric, 
It's now ready to drive and it can be driven indoors without any kind of exhaust emissions. I can't wait to get behind the wheel, Jack. It's a great time to be a driver. Sorry, Jack. No offence, mate. I'm going to stay here and savour the moment for a bit. Jack, it's back to you in the studio. Are you a medium or a large? Oh, sorry. Oh. I was just uh, buying me and Ian some lads on tour t-shirts <laughs> to commemorate our dirty weekend in Graz. OK, I'm now joined by Jaguar's Vehicle Line Director, Ian Hoburn. Welcome. Another legend in the world of Jaguar. Firstly, what is a Vehicle Line Director? I ought to get this one right, oughtn't yeah. I, really? Yes. Yeah. Um, hundreds, thousands of engineers have put their heart and soul into this car, and I am incredibly privileged to lead that team of engineers. Amazing. Now, we have got some questions for you as well. Um, first up, in the absence of an engine, what makes this car go? That'll be the two electric motors, uh, one motor on the front axle and one on the rear. In fact, you can see the motors just behind me there, hanging out on the wall. How far does it go on a charge? So on a single charge, iPACE will go 480 kilometers. That's almost 300 miles. It depends a bit on how you drive, but 480 kilometers. And how long does it take to charge at home? So at home, uh, it will charge in just over 12 hours from completely empty to completely full. So it will charge overnight at home. And in fact, if you're out and about, you can use a DC charger and you can charge from uh, 0 to 80% in less than 40 minutes. I don't know what to do now, because my next question is how long does it charge uh, out and about? Sorry. I'm going to have to think on my feet and come up with another question in the moment. Oh, dear. Does it have any cup holders? Ah, yes, it does have cup holders. Whew, save. Who wants to know about cup holders? It has four. Four. Two in the front and two in the back. Exceptional. Yes. Okay, that was a silly question. Okay, right. I'll end with a serious <laughs> technical question. Right. How many rugby players could you fit in it? <laughs> Are we talking forwards or backs? Oh, very good. Uh, let's go with backs. Backs. Uh, Five, easily. Five. And a scrum half in the boot. In the boot. Yep. And it's got two boots, a front boot, Has a, a fruit. A boot at the front. Yes. Are we calling it a fruit or a frunk? I think we're British, so we should fruit. call it a fruit. Fruit. But a fruit. fruit. Yes. The Ians say fruit. fruit. Therefore, it is fruit. Thank you, Ians. Now, when the Jaguar team tests the cars, they really test the cars. From extreme weather conditions to excessive driving, the tests are rigorous and thorough, just the way I like my tests designated to replicate a lifetime of customer use. Is this car as safe on the road as a normal car? The stability control, we have uh, fantastic front to rear bias. We're also able to uh, torque vector across the car so we can control the torque that we apply across the car with the brakes as well. So how do you feel the, the handling I, compares to a more conventional car? I thought it would be a bigger different, like weird feeling, but it is feels, feels really good. Tricky area, good, yeah. good we have four-wheel yeah, drive for yeah, that. Yeah. Doesn't feel like a family car, this. <laughs> the car felt much smoother than I thought, and um, yeah, it was a pleasant surprise, it was really good. Johnny's back. How was that for you as a self-proclaimed car geek? Yeah, it was actually, uh, I mean, I love factories anyway. I'm one of those people. I, I love to see how things are put together. Jaguar have clearly positioned themselves as a tech-leading car company. So, yeah, good times. Does it come in blue? Does it what? Come in blue. It does, actually, yeah. Cesium blue metallic, it would, it would suit you. Mm. Well, we are nearly at the end of the show, so let's find out how the charge is going. Ah, oh, yeah. This is the bit where I ask, ask her, yeah. Alexa. Alexa, uh, ask Jaguar Remote how long until my car is fully charged. Your car is currently 62% charged. It will be fully charged in 27 minutes. Is there anything else I can help you with today? Uh, there is, but not in front of a live audience. Alexa, please can you put me and Ian Callum down on the guest list for Paradise Gentlemen's Spa in Graz? <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of charge. At this level, it would get you to Prague from Vienna. Prague. Impressive. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it only matter of time before we, um, uh, the, ch the charge is finished. Um, but first, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be throwing back over to the wonderful iJustine. 
Thanks, Jack. Now, there is just enough time for a few more last-minute messages, and I have everyone telling me that I've been mispronouncing Jaguar the entire time, but guys, that's how we say it over there in America. Uh, we have a couple more here, which everyone seems very excited, and I'm pretty excited about the Alexa integration. We have a question, comment here from Nick Dobson on Twitter. Says, this launch looks so electrified. I want to be there. We wish you were here too, Nick. Danny is saying, Jaguar is going electric. This is a dream come true. Where do I sign up? And Nick loves the modern feel of this car. Is this the future? Yes, it definitely is. Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in. That's all for me here. I had so much fun in Graz and enjoy the rest of the show. Ladies and gentlemen, get your wallets and your credit cards ready. The books are now open. You can buy an iPace. So go and get one and be the envy of all of your friends. <laughs> Thank you, Justine. I feel genuinely enlightened about today. We've witnessed the future, and yet here it is today. You can go and own it. Pretty cool. You taught me about spillage as well. We've learned so much. Spillage. Thank you so much for joining us here today in Graz for the live global reveal of the new Jaguar iPace. Still to come, we have some of the incredible highlights from the show and the world premiere of the documentary that you will not want to miss. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. For more details and to, of course, watch this show again, which hopefully you will, go ahead to jaguar.com. Thank you and goodbye. January 2018. A new Jaguar is heading down the production line. But this vehicle is unlike anything the company has made before. This is the I-Pace. Jaguar's first ever electric car and the front runner in a transport revolution. We've decided to go into this challenge sooner rather than later because we are Jaguar, because our history is about innovation, because we're not frightened of the new. Designed from the ground up, the I-Pace is engineered to be tough. With aerodynamic lines and a long-range battery, powering an exhilarating drive. This is the story of how this radical new car was made and of how it changes everything. The iPACE project began with the highest ambition to make the world's finest electric car. But achieving this would push Jaguar's designers and engineers to the limit. It's the first big change in 100 years in the motor industry, and that's a real challenge for us. Designing a brand new car is no easy task. It would take nearly four years from first sketch to finished vehicle. But going electric and needing no engine comes with sizable benefits, giving the design team far greater freedom in shaping the car. So we yeah. move the people forward, so we'll put the cabin yeah. like so, yeah? So it's actually heading towards the front wheels. Very different, but I think this... Uh, I think it'll work. I think I it's going to work really, yeah. really nice proportion. So it's all about the drama of the front haunch and then the rear haunch sweeping back. This cab forwards design has given the I-Pace ample room for five large adults. None of this would have been possible with a conventional engine at the front.
powering the I-PACE is a sophisticated long-range battery. So this is one of our early prototypes of the battery. It's fairly large. It basically fits from the rear wheels to the front wheels. So the lowest point of this battery is the lowest point of the vehicle. The heart of this battery is the cell, which is not dissimilar to what you'd find in a tablet or a mobile phone, but we have a lot more of them. We have 432 in this pack. And there's a lot of infrastructure that facilitates the control and the cooling and ultimately the performance of this battery. This new temperature controlled battery allows the iPACE to travel 480 kilometers on a single charge. So we've got to a point where the range of an electric vehicle is something that people can relate to their daily lives. But there's more to this new battery technology than range alone. Fast charging points are springing up worldwide, giving the iPACE a charge time from empty to 80% of less than 45 minutes. And with artificial intelligence technology to recognize the driver from their key fob and calculate the car's range based on their driving style and regular journeys, the iPACE is at the forefront of the electric revolution. Back in the design studio, the result of months of creative effort is gradually beginning to show, and not just on a computer screen. This is technical modeling clay. Ian Asprey's job is to cut it to shape. It is great to see it coming out of just a lump of clay. This has got people's handprints on it and thumb prints on it and hard work and sweat. The drill bit follows a pre-programmed route, shaping the car with utmost precision. Well, from start to finish, with rough cuts and finished cuts, we could probably do a full car in about five days. I feel like it's an important moment because it's, it's the birth of something, really, isn't it? But nothing can replace human skills when it comes to shaping the clay. The human element to it is massively important um, because without that love and care that you, you know, put into a model, it wouldn't be the same. You're sculpting your car. You're using clay and you're using tools to make something come alive. It is a sculpture in a sense. With the clay model nearing completion, Ian Callum arrives for one of his regular inspections. Hi, guys. You all right? Not too bad. Good. Not too bad. OK, and what do you think? Well, I think, I think it's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. The definition of the cabin and the haunches sits just right. No, it's super. It's got all the power towards the front, and uh, yeah, I love it. But the stunning shape of the I-Pace is more than just the work of the designers. The engineering team also play a crucial role. And with prototype cars now available, they're preparing for a vital test. One that will influence the shape of the car and the range of its battery. The test? Aerodynamics. This is a full-scale wind tunnel, which can go up to 260 kilometers an hour. And it's something that is controlled just by a press of a button. And so until you come in here, you have no idea exactly the sheer size of what's behind your test. And this really allows us to identify where key tweaks and changes, how they're impacting the rest of the flow on the vehicle. It's a really, really powerful visual technique for that. 
This is one of the first prototypes that we've actually built with a real bodywork, but we still have some prototype parts on the car itself. We've done lots of work on clay models, uh, calculations, but now this is a real car. Truth time. Tell us when to stop. It's our first electric vehicle, which means that something like aerodynamics is even more important. Oh, uh, yeah. Good. We have to try and optimise it as much as we possibly can. Even millimetres of changes hugely impacts the range of the vehicle. We're looking good? Yeah. In today's test, the team are analysing one of the I-PACE's most striking features, the air bypass. The bypass, it's oh, definitely working there. Yeah. Oh, lovely, that's good. Yeah. With no engine, the air flows in through the grill and out through the duct. So what we're able to see with the smoke is the air being diverted through that duct and actually creating a much better angle onto that front windscreen, which hugely impacts the aerodynamics and ultimately the range of the vehicle as well. Tests like this have resulted in a car that slices cleanly through the air, greatly increasing the distance it can travel on a single charge. The I-PACE is so aerodynamic and its electric motors so silent that exterior noise could easily spoil the cabin's tranquility. So engineers are trying to identify where noise might enter the car. Now, what we have here is an acoustic camera. So for instance, if I was to click like this, it moves to my fingers because of the high energy level created at my fingertips. Today, the team are using the camera to analyse the dashboard of this prototype car. That there is the perfect view, wherever you've got that. Yeah, okay. cool. That's perfect. Hey, yeah, mate, you're good to go. Okay, fire up the rig. This kind of testing ensures that the I-PACE will be as refined as any other Jaguar. Ultimately, our aim is to create the most refined battery electric vehicle on the market today. Whether that's road noise, motor noise, wind noise, anything, we need to just get down to as low a level as possible. But making a near silent electric car creates another challenge. Like all Jaguars, the I Pace is designed to be fun. Ian Suffield's job is to ensure it sounds fun too. If I just start with the, the first car model that we've got, I will then go in and add some sound at about somewhere between sort of 50 to 100 kilometers an hour, such that it represents when you're accelerating up so you get the sense of power of the car. In the electric high pace, there's no engine noise to give dynamic feedback to the driver. So Ian is creating his own. It will play through the car's speakers. The next layer of sound I introduce to, to progress is from about 100 kilometers upwards. This is where the sound starts getting a little bit edgier, a little bit sharper. As if that's not enough, right at the very top end, above about 140, I've got a, another sound that comes in that's even edgier still. So this is us absolutely flooring it, and we've got our lovely race car howl there. 
get the real sense of actually you really want to pull this car forward. And it's in line with our heritage. It's, you know, we have a history of making great sounding really fast cars. So uh, this one needs to be no exception. But an exciting sounding car isn't enough. The team also wanted to be tough. So they've brought a prototype to Jaguar's proving ground for a high impact test. Sophisticated sensors fitted by the engineers will record how the I-Pace copes with severe bumps on the road. Okay, Doug, we're ready. The car cycles through different tests on different surfaces. This is only the start, because the information gathered here is now taken back to the engineering lab, where the car is really put through its paces. This test will run for the next eight weeks. The I-Pace, it's a new step for us, but we still test it to the same level as we would any other product. But there's more to this car than its robustness. The I-Pace is a Jaguar through and through. So the team have come to Italy to ensure it drives like one. This is the Nardo ring, a banked circle of tarmac so large it can be seen from space. It's one of the few places on Earth where cars can be constantly pushed to the limit. Today, the I-Pace is being tested at maximum velocity, VMAX. But regular pit stop safety checks are essential. Clear. All good. Clear. Okay. Clear. Yeah. Okay. Okay. With the midday temperature at 35 degrees. Okay, your side. Yeah. Okay, this side. The team carefully monitor the heat generated by the car's constant high-speed cornering. We have to keep a, a close eye on the wear and tear of the brake pads. Some of them can reach up to 650 degrees. Coming down. Pit stop complete. The car heads back to the track. You ready, Steve? Clear. It's hot, tiring work. Yet the team are determined that the I-Pace will drive like a true Jaguar. But Italy was only the beginning. In total, the team clocked up over 1.5 million test miles worldwide. Even at minus 40 in the Arctic. On their mission to make the world's finest electric car. This is the I-Pace. the first all-electric performance SUV from Jaguar. The future now.